I'm biased towards in general, but it does really work out well with the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, the biggest concern is, of course, going to be the Tusk Lockdown Walrus Punch, but uh, I would say even more so the Winter Wyvern's uh, Ultimate, that Winter's Curse, which is a, a really good solid lockdown. I feel like most teams, when they're dealing with the Winter Wyvern, have to go like a, a definitive dual core strat where they have to actually run two rather aggressive uh, carry heroes. And it, otherwise, if you just run one single hard carry, you're just locked down every single time in, in team fights. Yeah. If so if you're Vega Squadron, you need one more hero. I think if you do see the Storm Spirit, buying into one more lockdown isn't a bad idea. For example, mm. taking the Lion here uh, isn't necessarily awful. I think Lion is a decent pick. Just some sort of setup. Like, if you get a Blink Dagger, there's not a whole lot that Phoenix can do about it. You've got the counter initiation, I guess, with the Dazzle in terms of the Shallow Grave, but it's yeah. a soft option. It's not something that I necessarily like. Mm -hmm. So if you're Vega Squadron, I think that you want a hero like Lion to be able to deal with that. And you want a hero that doesn't necessarily need a lot of farm to deal with it as they do know that Kill opts to go for that Bloodstone over getting the Orchid first. So I think something like the Lion could be a decent option, just go, uh, scrolling through the hero list. Um, Witch Doctor, would it be terrible? Oh, it's actually going to be a Tusk support. Okay. Darkseer offlane, okay. That's not bad, I guess. This now gives us a lot of team fight potential for Vega Squadron. and the combination of being able to get a vacuum wall as well as in the Winter's Curse on top of that. That's an amazing amount of AoE control. Then you have the Queen of Pain's uh, damage that she gives in a nice comb between the Scream as well as the Sonic Wave. That, that can be just one amazing wombo combo that wipes out MVP Phoenix rather early on, um, especially with all that control, potentially you know catching the Dazzle in that, who's going to be one of those key heroes in, in making sure that some he stays alive through that Winter's Curse or, or through the single target focus of a Phantom Lancer. Uh, gonna be a there wasn't a whole lot of Battle Fury here left because they did take away that one of the soft counters that we talked about, the Animage. So all the MVP Phoenix were really left for was a Phantom Assassin. Is that going to be good enough? I think the Phantom Assassin is actually a pretty decent play here. There's not a, there's not too much physical damage on the side of Vega, Vega Squadron. So once she picks up something like a BKB, she can go to town. Uh, something I am a little bit concerned about, though, is is this the best storm game? I wouldn't say so. So it actually looks like they're going to put QO mid and send the storm to the uh, safe lane. And I think this is the correct idea because storm is going to have to have a good early game to be able to deal with this type of lineup because storm isn't the best counter to Phantom Lancer. Like, right. yes, you can initiate on him, but if you opt not to go for the Orchid, then... You know, you can't really put out too much damage. And even if you do go for the Orchid, all the Phantom Lancer has to do is pick up a Diffusal at a decent timing, Diffusal himself, Doppel walk out, and you've committed so much of your mana at that point that you die. Like, I've played against that. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a Storm player, playing against Phantom Lancer is actually miserable. And a big welcome to all of you just now joining us. We have MVP Phoenix facing up against Vega Squadron. The storyline here being the Vega Squadron for the last five months have grinded out a lot of smaller tournaments, never winning more than $5,000. And then this one best of three, they have the opportunity to win at least 50 grand. This is a huge step for Vega Squadron, but it all comes down to this series for them. Yeah, I think ever since they picked up Mag, they've just been on a roll. And this has been one of my favorite teams to watch. I know you've actually got a chance to see them grow as a team mm -hmm. and just to see them take step after step, seeing how far they've come along. Now they're playing for their TI tournament of lives. And I remember before the game, Febby said, winner of this goes to TI, the loser of this gets to play matchmaking. And he's like, good luck. Yeah, we're going to see a bit of action already centering up on that bounty route. Now, both teams really wanted to be able to get that early first blood. The dust goes out, and they are going to try and catch out Febby here, slowing him down. But between the heals and the obvious aggression of the Undying, it's just too dangerous for Vega Squadron to pursue, and there will not be that coveted first blood. So bounty rune is picked up by both the Phantom Assassin as well as KP's Storm Spirit. A big win for MVP Phoenix. Yeah, no one's already got the Sentry Ward. Febby is in this mid lane with a Sentry of his own and uh, an Observer Ward, and he's just trying to help out Qo however he can because this is a tough matchup for Qo to be able to win. But with this early aggression and the amount of regen that uh, no one has, this is actually going to be okay for the Phantom Assassin. And that's yeah. all you need, just that early start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that uh, no one had to blow through his early share Tango and is still missing HP, he's still got a cooldown another uh, 15 seconds before he can pick up uh, a little bit more regen. And even that's not going to be enough to bring him up to full. So uh, he's going to be very susceptible to the aggression of the Bounty Hunter and that constant Phantom Assassin dagger spam um, for the next few minutes. And I think you're right. This kind of ensures that our PA will be uh, doing fine in lane anyway. 
I like this decision too by MVP Phoenix to send uh, KP to the offlane with this Storm Spirit because they realize they're probably going to get aggro trilane because Storm doesn't really provide anything and so they have to use a few TPs to rotate people down. But KP is going to struggle in this lane because one, he's not going to do well against the help of the support and he doesn't have too much regen to back him up. But I think they anticipated this and how many times do you get to see an offlane Storm Spirit? Yeah, not too often. This is very rare, but of course, MVP Phoenix, if any time you're going to pull out a surprise strategy like this, now's the time. Vega Squadron uh, did have their counter ward taken away from them. They actually, QO passed over his shared tango to Febby. Uh, he dropped his own sentry, immediately ate the sentry of uh, Vega Squadron, and now this leaves no one very susceptible to that free harassment. As you can see, Febby's already going to go in, get a good 150, 200 damage, maybe even force out the blink. No, nope. no one just cops the damage and uh, holds on to his blink for now but it's a big win march e now coming in actually very fast he's gonna lay out the tombstone he might be able to get the first blood here in the bottom lane going for solo here comes the last couple of right clicks from kp they managed to get that cold embrace but the magic damage is still gonna be there and solo will end up falling for the first blood march takes that one and they even push back both pasha and sayumath slayer yeah and they've done a good job with the rotations march realizes in that top lane he's not really needed but at the same time, Vega, this is a pretty ad advantageous lane for them because the Darkseer has been relatively unopposed this entire time. He's got 11 CS to start the game. It's not as though a Dazzle is the best support at solo harassing anybody down. And so the laning phase is going to go pretty well for Vega as at bottom. Vevi's going to be the target here as he goes down. Easily cleaned up. March now is going to be the next target of Vega Squadron. Look at that. Pasha trying to go for the body block, but March just proves to be too tanky of a target when he's able to steal multiple you decays. That, didn't you? So they will back themselves up, but Vega Squadron managing to even out the score here. But CS-wise, this is still looking pretty good for Vega Squadron. All of their lanes are actually winning in that regard. Yeah, the thing about the dual lane harassment mid is that the Queen of Pain does win that matchup. The Bounty Hunter comes to help out, but the Queen of Pain is under no pressure. It's no real pressure because you realize, okay, there's nobody that can gank me. Like yeah. MVP, what they lack a lot is stuns. They don't really have any sort of disables to open up on her. So yeah, Febby can be cute, harass her a little, but it's not going to actually put a dent into anything because once Febby has to leave this lane eventually, Kyo is going to struggle in this lane, and you're seeing that right now. And the problem with Dazzle as a solo support in this uh, lane at top is that you're not really going to be able to accomplish too much against a hero like Darkseer, who's got seven armor, a stout shield, he's already got a soul ring, and so you're going to see Mag come up huge in this lane. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Nuts is always... Uh He's going to have to rotate to the middle lane eventually, right? I mean, once the Queen of Pain gets uh, level 6, level 7, you have that extreme amount of burst damage. She can go on the PA almost at any time. I think you eventually will rotate him down, but mm. he does need to get some levels because if you're going to do this type of dual lane setup, right. you should focus on pulling, uh, stacking wherever you can because this lane isn't going very well. And so for both heroes to not be able to zone out the Darkseer because a Storm or a Dazzle aren't going to be able to do it, you have to be getting something in return. So right. levels are going to be the correct response here. And so the proper thing to do is give KP as much solo experience as possible and simply just let... Uh, Warnuts continue to stack and pull as much as he can to try to pick up his own levels. Because you have to be greedy to punish this. Now, Febby, he's been waiting here for the last 30 seconds, and he may just score up big time. There is double bottles coming in oh, through this, this courier. Huge. This could actually just win them the landing phase straight up. If Febby manages to oh, snatch it, it coming? leading one, more one another right click will be able to get him. Meanwhile, QO is in there for no one. He's actually trapped out. QO trying to get up. Nice block with the ice shards. And they will be able to get some damage now onto QO. He needs a jump, but won't be able to get out. The cooldown was still there. And while they do take away that double bottle for three minutes, QO with the dive there onto no one. Gets a bit too aggressive and get caught out by the toss. Now the top lane mag is going to be the next target, but surge level two being invested in means that the Darkseer will have enough haste time to get out of there. Radiance yeah, even though Kyo died attack. for that, that was just a good play by Vega to rotate the Tuscar over. He did a really good job trapping him with the eye shards. Kind of made Kyo say, okay, what do I do here? I'm kind of stuck. There's not a lot of options, and so unable to get out. But still, that double bottle snipe, that's absolutely massive right now uh, for MVP. A, it gives your entire team gold, and B, it just... Uh, gets rid of two pretty significant resources off the bat. Yeah, this kind of stalls the dominance of the Queen of Pain in that middle lane, right? Like, if she was able to get, say, get that six-minute rune and say it was something valuable, double damage, haste, invis, who knows, like, they, then you actually have the opportunity to either get a kill on that Phantom Assassin rather easily or just push her out of lane with the extra regen that you have or maybe gank some of the side lanes and kind of upset the balance there as well. 
Yeah, and so KP's gonna get this regen at top and just head himself back to top, but at the same time, Mag still does have a decent amount of CS, but MVP are starting to catch up in that department. As you said, that bottle uh, being taken away from no one is making it a little bit difficult for him to stand in this lane, because if he just gets hit once like this, he's already down to 400 HP, and it's gonna be a full minute before he gets anything back. Yeah, and you never know, Phantom Assassin, who's about to pick up her level 6, uh, you know, a little bit of RNG luck, and Phantom Assassin could actually potentially jump the Queen of Pain, get that coup de grace uh, uh, crit, and be able to take out the Queen of Pain, which would be a huge upset. So he's got to be really careful um, with his HP and how low he drops. Now the bottom lane, they're going to try and go on on this Yon dying. Lays out the Tombstone, but it looks like there is still enough damage. Starfire's going to come in big, but there is still the Doppelganger to make sure the Undying goes down. The Tombstone is still up, though, and that means Solo is surrounded by zombies, plus a Storm Spirit, now with the Dazzle joining it. An easy counter kill there. One for one trade-off. Yeah, you did have to rotate three heroes down, and so this top lane is going to be heavily pressured by Mag right now, and so this is an MVP's favor to rotate these heroes down, but they have to get something out of it because they are losing their top at the same time. Because Mag can just use this Ion Shell on himself uh, to simply skip the creep wave, and March is going to TP up there, but whether they can actually trade down this tower remains to be seen. And with March there, I don't actually think they can get this anymore. And the Tusk is actually going to TP to this bottom lane in preparation for the defenses. There are pings coming down by MVP. A good ice shard, and he might be able to put someone like the Dazzle in a bad position. KP dodging the first lands out from Pasha. And doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any more action here. The tower one, Tier 1 tower is going to go down into the deny range, but it doesn't look like MVP Phoenix are going to try and snag that last hit, so should be denied by Vega Squadron. Yeah, they're okay with this, though. Just denied. applying pressure to the safe lane in general is a good idea. It does open up the map a little bit, but at the same time, again, like I've said, Mag is going to be relatively uncontested at this top lane. Um, he does have a decent amount of CS for the mid laner, and KP just working his way back up to that top lane. And looking at Febby's levels, he's only level 3 right now, He's done a good job of disrupting the lanes overall, but you do eventually need to pick up levels. So what does exactly MVP Phoenix do about that? I mean, we see a lot of bounty hunters uh, are eventually given some sort of solo space. For this game, what, it, what lane does MVP Phoenix give up? Do they get their Undying really involved and maybe just try and force some action at top lane and give the bounty hunter bottom solo? I think you just let the bounty hunter at bottom because now that the laning phase has passed, the likelihood of having sentries just for that purpose right. is kind of pointless because you're not going to buy 10 sentries in the hopes that he'll be in one of those lanes. And so this bottom lane should be a little bit of free experience and just continue to farm out the other lanes. Like you said earlier on, just sit one or two heroes behind this uh, Phantom Assassin mid because he's the only real susceptible target. Because until the... Uh, the winter is level 6, you're not really going to see a lot of pressure onto the storm. And at the same time, it's not worth it to devote too many resources just to kill Febby at bottom. Right. And so it's only this mid lane right now that is susceptible to ganks. But as long as you're holding by MVP Phoenix, you're doing an okay job. Mm -hmm. But I think Vega is also pretty satisfied with this trade is at bottom, Febby's going to get initiated on. Yeah, Febby does it up and doesn't really have too much escape, but he does have March, able to give him the heals, and now Sam the Slayer tries to make the TP up, but a Shuriken is there to intercept, and it will be a big turnaround there as Vega Squadron try and dive a bit too deep and end up giving away a free kill. Cost MVP Phoenix a lot of rotations once again, but it seems to be paying out for them nonetheless. Yeah, Vega, it seemed like they were a little bit hesitant there. I think the call was originally to go in, and then he wasn't really sure if they wanted to overcommit for this, but Febby at bottom, he's out of mana right now, and Phantom Lancer is diving quite far for this. He just needs the vision to be able to get that last Lance oh, on. No, Febby's play actually he sees him, he has to pick that one up. The rest of the team is coming in from the side, though. QO, the first one on the mark. As the weed starts taking away the Phantom Lancer's armor, this physical damage out from the Phantom Assassin is going to make short work of Pasha. Another five seconds for Doppelganger. Really, he just wants to get to the Ancients to deny himself, but no such luck. QO cleans him up with the Coup de Grace crit. And that's a killing spree going the way of the mid-hero that wasn't doing the best, and so you have to worry about overextending like that because Febby's going to be pretty satisfied with that trade. But at the same time, Febby wasn't a part of that. He didn't really get experience, and you're still seeing him get pretty much a level every two minutes. Mm -hmm. So this is going to slow down MVP a little bit, but still a worthwhile trade for them overall. Yeah, I mean, you look at QO on the net worth board, he's actually a decent chunk ahead of no one at this point, which is uh, surprising to say the least. Now, the upside for Vega Squadron is that they still have a, a decently farmed Phantom Lancer 
somewhat shut down by that last death, but sitting at 4K second in the net worth board. The Storm Spirit, though, from MVP Phoenix is top right now. Already has the Tread, Soul Ring, and an empty bottle. The Storm Spirit's going to come online in the next 5 to 10 minutes, and it seems like with all the free farm he's getting, at least for now, he's going to be a very Radiant's dominant force for MVP Phoenix. Attack. Yeah, and he's going to opt to go for the Orchid this game just to be a little bit more active. And I like this decision because the Phantom Assassin is going to be your true one position who will get the BKB, who will be mm -hmm. the real hero that you want to keep alive. And the Storm Spirit is trying to make himself a little bit less important. And at top, it looks like they do want to start applying pressure to these lanes as Febby gets closer to his level 6. And yeah. Now, this is fairly common in, in sort of the um, play and counterplay between a Storm Spirit versus Queen of Pain matchup. Both of them tend to go for Orchids in order to shut the other down. But when you put the Storm Spirit in the safe lane, essentially, for MVP Phoenix and are able to grant him all the free farm he wants, not contesting in any way, he's able to get that Orchid before the Queen of Pain, potentially. But Mass TP's coming up. Already the Tombstone laid out. They go for the back. Warnut is able to get off the Shell of Raven. Now no one is going to be turned around on, but there's just not enough magic damage in the pool. No one doesn't have a blink quite yet. Another five seconds. Cape the last couple right clicks, zombies chasing him down. They will be able to get the kill. The tombstone finally dies. QO making the reintroduction as he tries to jump in and get some kills. Febby blocked out by beautiful ice shards. Will be the next casualty of MVP Phoenix. They try and make their way out of this one. Storm Spirit zipping through that one. QO realizing he's not going to be able to make his way out. No, he does. He actually jumps over the Storm Spirit. Still being pursued out. The Lance comes in, finishes them off for a double kill on Pasha. And now KP with very little mana left is going to be run down by Pasha who has the Ion Shell on top of him. TP rotation's coming in, but it's just not going to be in time. A big win for Vega Squadron as they take control of the first team fight. A beautiful fight by Vega from start to finish. The Queen of Pain just self-sacrifices herself, blinks forward, is saved by the, uh, the Cold Embrace for such a long time, and there just wasn't enough damage from MVP, and this is the issue right now, is that, yeah, you've got an Undying, but at the same time, Febby, who's only level 5, isn't able to provide anything in these fights, and the Storm has to overcommit to be able to get kills, and then this mid lane, he's gonna get harassed down a little bit, but... Yeah, a fantastic no trade for Vega. If no one actually had does there, I feel like he could have actually just run down the bounty hunter in that situation. So, bebby has got to be real careful as even just the smaller nuke of the Queen of Pain is able to drop him significantly low. Uh, does find himself a nice haste rune. Is going to give that one up to QO, who has the bottle. So, Febby will be fed some regen for his troubles. 8 to 5 right now, 13 minutes in, and a very even net worth and experience graph, says this last team fight actually brought Vega Squadron back to dead even. Yeah, and if you're Vega Squadron, you're pretty happy with how this game is going, especially with how much net worth your Phantom Lancer has. Like, this is a hero that early on, he had to switch lanes, yes. he overcommitted at that bottom uh, dive, and he died, and... Now you see him skyrocket, and this is the issue right now for MVP Phoenix, because I think they anticipated being in a better situation right now with that Undying, being able to take fights early, but it hasn't been able to happen, and the Phantom Lancer is about to pick up a Diffusal Blade, and if he gets going, there's not a whole lot in this game that can stop him, and so mm -hmm. MVP, I mean, they're going to look for a fight again soon because of the type of lineup that they have, but Vega, with his top tank at the same time, is going to slow them down even further. Yeah, March. March. He heals himself up, but it's not quite enough. And now they get the free Tombstone Gold on top of that, which is a pretty big factor. An extra 150 going to Mag, and they're also in a great position to be able to take this Tier 1 tower in the top lane. MVP Phoenix, though, reading that, is going to go for the push in the middle lane. Already the Phantom Lens are trying to slow them down. This. Looks like it. Tier 1 tower dropping low, but Vega Squadron do have the Glyph already. The Winter Wyvern is here and does have the Winter's Curse available. Very dangerous fight if MVP Phoenix were to force it. And I really like this play right now from Vega. They're not giving up anything they have to. Mm -hmm. They're constantly going for the ganks to just slow down MVP Phoenix's eventual death ball that they want to shoot for. And they're doing a good job. They're like, okay, we're not even going to give up a Tier 1 tower. Oh, can't wow. End. What a beautiful snag. Managed to get the dust out, and Febby is trapped like a rat. He's going to try and go for the TP out, but no luck. 10 to 5 now in the favor of Vega Squadron. Vega's just saying, there's only so many times we're going to let you track from the high ground yep. before we just go and kill you. And uh, Febby sh shut down further as MVP now on the retreat. They realize this already isn't a fight that's going to happen. And meanwhile, at this top lane, Mag just continues to push it in, and MVP pressure on all their lanes right now as the Lance does go on top of March. I don't know if they can quite fight this yet. The Weave is on top, but I think they just waited out and split up again. Yeah, there's a big push coming in from the bottom lane. Pasha makes the TP out, and 
it seems like perhaps even even though they are ahead as Vega Squadron, it's perhaps a bit too dangerous to try and force a, a five versus five under the enemy's tier one tower when you're dealing with an undying, especially an undying who got so much solo experience. Uh, this tier one tower is now going to be threatened by MVP Phoenix, but farther up, QO with the double damage trying to go for the Queen of Pain. Now looping his way around the side, but doesn't look like we're going to see a fight as the tier one tower falls and MVP Phoenix back up to continue farming. Yeah, Vega right now is just doing a good job of not letting MVP Phoenix back into the game, but at the same time, MVP Phoenix, they do have the Medallion of Courage on the nuts right now. He's oh, just, yeah. He had so many kills early on. He's got two. He's been a part of two kills at the same time, and this is going to mean a quick Roshan, and whether or not Vega actually ought to go for this defense. Yeah, he's trying to scout it out, but it looks like Vega Squadron know exactly what's happening. They're already smoke up and are ready for the defense. Question is, who's going to come out on top in this team fight? The Queen of Pain could get a really big entrance here. Already the dust getting laid out. There goes the Tombstone. Windows first back him up and really control the QO as he gets popped. Warnuts now gets off the shell grave the last half second, but it already seems to be a lost fight for MVP. The only hope is KP. He's able to pick up at least one kill. Gets it on the Winter Wyvern, but now trying to make his escape but is completely out of mana, sort of trapped. Three heroes go down from MVP Phoenix, and that Roshan is left with only 3k HP. It seems like Vega Squadron can actually take that for themselves. I really liked what MVP were going for. They were just saying, okay, let's try to go for the Roshan at this time, but yeah, they were, it was a little bit too obvious. You saw the Dazzle who showed himself on the map with the medallion, so that's the natural response that you're going to go for if you're behind in a game like this. And Vega continuing to show there's no real answer for them on the other side for this Phantom Lancer, who just goes to town in every single fight. Yep. He's already 7-1 and one right now, more kills combined. Um, like, he alone has more kills than every single person on MVP Phoenix combined right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's got the Diffusal, Drums, and now that Aegis. That Diffusal is going to be particularly troublesome. You have multiple heroes on the side of MVP Phoenix who are very reliant on their mana, including uh, their sort of carry of the group, QO's Phantom Assassin. I mean, this is a hero that wants to be able to bounce from hero to hero using that Phantom Strike, but if he's always pestered by these illusions, keeping his mana down, he's got no mobility whatsoever, and he's uh, very... I feel like he's not going to be that much of a threat when he's completely out of mana. I mean... Uh, just the attack speed and being able to get that sort of jump is so key for the Phantom Assassin um, in preventing her from being kited around. Yeah, more than MVP playing poorly, I think this is just Vega being a little bit... Like, they're one step ahead of them every single time. It's yeah. like, MVP want a period of time where they just want to farm, and then they lose their bounty hunter, and then they lose their undying. And right now, you're seeing this payoff because, yeah, the gold lead that the, uh, the bounty hunter can get you back into, I mean, it doesn't do that for experience right now. As you're seeing Febby, we talked about him being level 5 at 10 minutes. He's picked up one level in the 9 minutes since then. Mm -hmm. And you do need levels at some point to be able to fight this. Yeah, team fight after team fight going poorly for MVP. The next hope for them, perhaps this BKB that's going to be coming up soon for the Phantom Assassin just needs the recipe and is trying to farm it up in the jungle. Meanwhile, KP is also trying to finish up the Orchid. So it seems like MVP Phoenix really need to stay away from some fights for the next few minutes and just farm up those very critical mid-game items. They'll march. Maybe caught out here. They actually managed to catch Bevy as well, potentially, if they had the counter vision. But Sam of the Slayer just leads with a small snowball and the rest of the team backs up. Yep, Tombstone has been dropped, and I think that's going to be Vegas' signal to go down this mid lane. And MVP. An Aegis advantage, no Tombstone. It seems like a very prime opportunity for Vega Squadron to take that first Tier 2 tower. And they still got a lot of gold on the market. I mean, that bottom lane, the Tier 1 tower is still standing. It seems like Vega Squadron are going to be able to basically snowball their way through what was a, a neutral net worth lead by 15 oh, minutes. Oh, Febby gets caught again by a blind ice shards. Beautiful. Same with the Slayer, just on the money right now with those dusts. And while they snag that kill, they also get the Tier 2 tower in middle lane. And now our Phantom Lancer, who already has the boots of travel, is quick to go to bottom to start pushing that one out. Yeah, and even though it does sound like we're giving heavy praise to Vega, and it does sound as if Vega does have control of the game, I mean, MVP, you've got a bounty hunter who can turn things around. You're about to pick up a BKB on your Phantom Assassin, and these are the items and things that you need to be able to come back into this game. Like right. that first BKB that 
QO pops is going to be so huge. Like, that has to be a fight that you win with multiple tracks to be able to come back into this game and take back some map controls. The difference in net worth, it's starting to climb. That second Oblivion staff is on the way for the Storm Spirit, but the Orchid's still not ready to go and may provide enough disincentive for MVP not to go in, but never mind, they already jump on a solo, try to finish him off immediately, a couple of crits, and they might be able to get it, but no, the Winter's Curse gets laid out, yes, the Winter Wyvern's down, but a really good snowball sets everything up with a Sonic Wave on top, and MVP Phoenix just crumble under the pressure of Vega Squadron as they go through three heroes and are now well set up to take that Tier 1 tower. They kept Pasha alive, they kept the Darkseer alive as well. It seems these heroes are just spiraling out of control as they now take this Tier 1 tower, and maybe even put pressure on the tier two as well. It was a really good idea by MVP Phoenix. What they were trying to do is immediately pop solo as fast as he can so he can't get that cold embrace or that winter's curse off. Mm -hmm. But they just didn't have enough damage. They don't really have any magical nuke damage if you look at their lineup. And so as soon as he got that cold embrace off, you just saw them kind of stand around. The BKB timer was wasted because he got the winner's curse off. And then that ultimate by the Queen of Pain, hitting five heroes directly in a line. Not a winnable fight for MVP by any stretch after that and that's exactly the combination we were talking about during the draft, the uh, Winter's Curse with the vacuum on top, you know, the mass AOE control offered by uh, those two heroes, essentially setting up the Queen of Pain with a big sonic wave. It was a beautiful combination the Vega Squadron laid out and rather easily won them the fight, but we'll see. MVP Phoenix are not going to go down fighting here. They're actually going to go for a four-man smoke up and see if they can find a pick for themselves and maybe get some finally, some control over this map. And this is going to be pretty significant because KP now has that Orchid, and so he's going to look for that Winter um, so that he can just knock him down as fast as he can. And now you've got options because if you can, in the air, mid-roll cast the Orchid before he can get the Cold Embrace off, then right. you can actually win a fight because that was a large portion of why that fight was lost because he was able to get that Winter's Curse off and Debbie's looking for the track right now and they are looking oh, yeah. for the initiation. They've scattered him out, but can they actually catch him? Phantom Lancer known to be a very slippery hero to deal with. In fact, MVP Phoenix now being spotted out as the smoke fades and they will be forced on the retreat as the Phantom Lancer illusions by themselves are enough to chase away the Storm Spirit. It seems like MVP Phoenix, they try and plant their feet, but there's just no ground to go on. Uh, Vega Squadron are just simply a little bit too far ahead for a straight up fight, so... At this point in time, MVP Phoenix, you just kind of repeat that process, continue to look for that kind of smoke opportunity and, and pick that one hero off and hope that changes your fortune. Yeah, definitely. I like the fact that they're still playing aggressively. Like, if you noticed, um, on the side of MVP, they knew when the Roshan was going to go down, and so they counted it out and said, let's look for a fight, but at the oh, same no time... no one! He's actually jumped in! That leads QO a perfect opportunity to be able to jump in, but no! The Cold Embrace is now going to stop, and now the Cold and the Winter's Curse on QO controls him, and the Blink Away from our Queen of Pain is going to be able to get him out. KP trying to jump in, but rapidly running out of mana as the Diffusal Blade is just too much to handle. QO goes down, and Warnut's being pursued out by Pasha. Throws out that purge and will be able to get the kill on the support quite easily. Two down from MVP Phoenix as Vega Squadron march, march right uphill. Yeah, as I was saying, Vega, they knew the Aegis was about to expire and Phoenix did too. And so they said, okay, we have to go for something right now. This is the time. We have a BKB, we have an Orchid. There's not a whole lot else that we're going to get that's going to change the fortune of this game. Yep. But at the same time, Vega knew that it was coming. They're like, okay, the Aegis is about to expire. Let's just five man group because we know they're going to run into us. And so that fight. It doesn't go as planned, and Vega marching down. They're going to take the racks down as two heroes are still dead for MVP, and Vega just not allowing the Bounty Hunter track to make any sort of impact this game. Yeah, without a single one team fight here. Now they're actually going to be able to get, grab Sayo the Slam, but again, the Cold Embrace is there, and KP is completely out of mana. The Tombstone is laid out. The Zombie is attempting to slow down the retreat of Vega Squadron. QO now jumping on to Sayo the Slayer. Needs a couple more, but the Snowball goes off. That's going to delay his death significantly. He still is going to go down. But I think Vega Squadron just managed to keep their losses to only one hero, which is quite significant. Yeah, that's a pretty... I mean, I don't want to say it's a pretty decent trade. That's a fantastic trade. You take down a Tier 3 tower and a Rax in exchange for your Tusk. You don't lose any of your cores. You're perfectly okay if you're uh, Vega right now, because all you have to do now is play Objective Dota. Wait for the next Roshan to come up. 
try to pick it off be smart about it don't blow your lead because again the bounty hunter is always a looming threat you yeah you can't exactly. really make mistakes against it in a situation like that once you are on the retreat after you've taken the objective it's very common for the enemy team to be able to pursue catch a few heroes and especially with a bounty hunter that actually can give you uh quite a lot as you said that track hold really building up and obviously with vega squadron uh quite ahead in net worth there's a lot to be gained for mvp phoenix from every single pick off they find but vega squadron managed to keep it to a minimal one death and MVP Phoenix now struggling to keep some control. I like the way that they're immediately going for a split push. KP dressing the bottom lane. Meanwhile, you have uh, QO immediately trying to push out that top lane. Looks like we're still going to be seeing uh, a Battle Fury build out of QO just a bit delayed with the BKB first. Or is there another option for this Perseverance? I think... I mean, a Lincoln's could potentially be it as well, but you just need to go all in for the damage right now. You can't go for defensive items at this point. Right. Because you're seeing what's going on in these fights. Like, it's not that bad for them, but it's just the fact that every single fight, everybody from Vega gets low, except for the Phantom Lancer. Like, the Phantom Lancer almost always walks away with full HP, yeah. relatively decent amount of mana, and so they just don't really have an answer or a reply for him. Because look at top right now. Q is going to be the target, and... Nuts is already getting taken down as he's going to go for the TP. He should be able to get out. QO is going to TP at the same time too. Good move by him, but he by himself is able to 2v1. And he's not even afraid at this point, frankly. Mm -hmm. Oh, the vacuum managed to snag KP. That's a pickoff right there. Unfortunately, without any mana, there's no escape. And Vega Squatch are now up their kill count to 20. As I was going to say, MVP Phoenix were doing a really good job putting pressure on the side lanes and still managing to get out through the TPs. But right as I was about to say that, the Storm Spirit does get caught uh, by a great Blinken from Mag, the Darkseer. Uh, knowing that he's going to be so essential with good vacuums in these team fights, goes for the Blink Dagger. Uh, because if he gets a really good vacuum, that means the Winter's Curse is going to follow up. And then, as we mentioned before, the Sonic Wave. So that mobility for the Darkseer being very critical, not only in team fights, but obviously the pickoff there. Yeah, and the Tusk is going to wait right now for the Roshan because, like I said, this is the main objective that you're waiting for to go for the high ground. And you want to do this because there's no real reason to try to push uh, whatever advantage you have when you don't have the Aegis. It's just wasteful because you know that you have a tight grip on this lead. All you have to do at this point is make sure you don't throw it. Like, just close out as hard as you can. And going for the Roshan is going to be able to secure that for Vegas. They're just going to go for the next objective, which I think is the Roshan. Force MVP to defend this bottom lane so you see them coming a mile away. Right. And at bottom, AP tries to initiate, but Asha's just going to get out of there, saving the Manta at the same time. Yeah, those illusions just being so pesky, pushing KP all the way back to the fountain, as you can see there. Now going for that Roshan, MVP Phoenix. It seems like the only way back into this game has got to be contesting Roshan and making a really great team fight happen around that. Uh, was a relatively late timer for Roshan, so they should have an idea that it potentially is up, but. Obviously, with both the bottom and middle lane pushing in, uh, they have some creeps to push out before they can actually get to that Roshan pit. Yeah, I think uh, KP actually has to just YOLO for this and go for it. Because even if you're wrong, okay, he's a little bit too late. But even if you're wrong, you have to at least try to prevent oh, it. No no one blinks in. That was not the play. Blink forward aggressive. Oh, immediately take it out. Oh, what a great vacuum into the Winter's Curse, controlling everyone. MVP Phoenix got a great pick off and are now in serious trouble. As now the Phantom Lance at the back is able to clean through a couple more heroes. Four down and QO on the run. He's going to try and buy a TP scroll for the side shot, but it's on cooldown. He can't even get back to his own base. MVP Phoenix are left with no defense now as the middle lane is already pushed in and Vega Squadron will go straight for that bottom lane of Rax. All right, when you hear about those combos, you know, the whole the vacuum into this, into this, into this, it's rare that you actually see it pan out. But in this uh, in this instance, like three times this game, we've seen, we've seen the uh, Winter's Curse in the vacuum. We even saw the Shiva's Guard there get popped off. The only thing missing was the Queen of Pain ultimate. You lose the Queen of Pain instantly in the fight, your mid hero, and it doesn't even matter because Pasha is just so strong on that Phantom Lancer. No natural counters on the side of MVP Phoenix, and we're just seeing this lineup roll through. Incredibly good coordination from Vega Squadron as they even seem to have cut their losses. Once again, uh, they're not going to lose a single hero for this one, it seems like. Vega Squadron managed to take that Tier 3 tower. Uh, don't overstay their welcome in any way. Managed to get out before the, the TPs and the, and the revives from MVP Phoenix are there to be able to defend. So everyone gets out. Vega Squadron are just playing a very clean, crisp game. Yeah, and this is 
the uh, I mean MVP isn't playing to their usual standard, but at the same time, I like that they're not giving up. They're saying, okay, let's consistently keep looking for opportunities to win. They're still doing the right things to try to come back into this game. It's just that the gold and experience lead is just not within a realm where simply wanting is going to change anything. Like you have to get some track kills off, and right now we're seeing uh, KP try to go for this, but that cold embrace. I mean, yeah. this winter uh, pick is just working out so hard right now. KP is going to get initiated on, going to go down, and just another kill going the way of Vega. 25 to 10, 31 minutes in. It is over a 20,000 gold lead and 12,000 experience. A very dominant position Vega Squadron are sitting in. All they have to do is push in this bottom lane to get the second lane of Rax, and Pasha is already there. Taking it out, and MVP Phoenix don't seem to have any response without their Storm Spirit. Many of their heroes not able to uh, TP or not really in a position to be able to defend, even if they could get there. Now you have the Snowball jumping in already. Bevy is going to be going down. It's left with only three now for MVP Phoenix. Their only hope now is the fact that they've got the Tier 2 tower still alive in the top lane, which means that Vega Squadron can't go for Mega straight up. Yeah, and Bevy has to be so frustrated right now by this Tusk. Because every single time he was trying to do the comeback mechanic, you know, from the high ground, track, track, track. Yes. The Tusk just throws out the blind eye shorts every single time on him, catches him out. Dust is always there as a follow-up, and they're just not letting MVP get into this game whatsoever. They're not overextending with any of their advantages, even with the type of lead that they've built up fight after fight. Vega saying to themselves, play this game out slowly. No mistakes, no regrets. Like, this is our chance of getting into TI right now. Just don't do anything silly, and I like this sort of discipline that they're showing right now. And Fan Lancer even addressing the um, the Phantom Assassin. You don't normally see Phantom Lancer build into early MKBs, um, but obviously the one advantage of a carry Phantom Assassin is that she has that innate blur with a 50% evasion, but if you can cancel that out with the MKB, uh, pretty much relegates Phantom Assassin to a rather poor carry, so they're now set up to go for that tier two top lane. MVP Phoenix have to go all in, have to try and force something. And I love the fact that they're not just waiting and sitting back inside their base. They're going to try and get the jump on Vega Squadron here. They have to wait for the BKB, though, on QO. It's got four seconds left. He's going to uh, throw the dagger out and Jumps out now, Sonic Wave, QO already dropping quite low. The Shell Grape goes off just in time. He now addresses for the Winter's Crest laid out. No one is just standing in the middle of all of this one up. Beast Solo is now dropping quite low, but the Cola Brace kept him alive. MPV Phoenix have already dropped a few. QO is coming back for Vengeance. Life number two, but still can't grab anybody. Vega Squadron are managing to dodge all of this one. And MVP Phoenix actually call GG halfway through the fight because they can see the writing on the wall. Vega Squadron are just outplaying them every step of the way in these team fights and not much hope for them in game number one yeah if you're mvp phoenix i mean that's <laughs> clearly not how you wanted the game to go but i think this was more of a drafting thing than anything you saw the cold embrace pay off against a team that had almost no magic damage and you saw a phantom lancer just go to work on the team that had very little to deal with uh the aoe factor yes